Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com I have the Granny Poncho for you today. We're gonna cover the idea of actually being able to change the size but also give you lots of tips. There's no sewing involved in this one. This one is a join as you go on the very last round. In fact the last two rounds are the same color. So what you can do is do this like an assembly line which I'll explain in a bit. First thing you need to understand with these particular ones is that when you do the neckline that's gonna be the establishing idea for the sizing. So if you would like to change the neckline in any way for um, length then you can actually make it for a child size or you can make it for somebody that would like more space. So let's say I just cover the orientation for being able to join these particular ones at the neckline and we'll talk about it from that point. So when we go to do this we need to create a total of 64 motifs. Now Gail has, Gail is the designer. Now she has a color breakdown for the color options if you would like to do that and she also did this in a solid color so you can decide which way you wanna go. Now when you're doing the neckline, the neckline looks like this. So it's just granny squares. Now I just bend the circle just to make it look easier or bend the the bend the shape but these are all squares. So this square is attached to this one and this one is here and then they just join side by side all the way and this one here it comes into here and then this one comes into here. So it creates this opening face section where your head will pop through and it will rest nicely over the top. So what I want you not to think about for this particular one is that when you're making these it's not like it's a square at the top like this. It's not at all. So it's actually more like this and how it's joining. So once you understand that it becomes easy. Now down the front of the, her outfit you'll notice that there's four of these motifs. There's one, two, three and four and there and this is a, a square as well but the way that I've had the drawing is just makes it easier for me to show you. And you're essentially going to fill in the space all the way to the other side. So there's four going down on the on the back side as well. So here's my sample here and I have the back and the front. So when I pull it out like this do you see that the idea? Okay so you have your two points. So this is the front or the back. It doesn't matter which one it is. And then it's just joining. So if you look at it from this perspective you've just joined and it just keeps joining and following along. And then this side is your same orientation. So it's just going in like this. So your neck and shoulders will be coming through the hole. So I determined on the particular sample that I believe that there's four of these before the end. So you're gonna have one, two and then you'll have four. Okay, so you'll have four and then four. So this gives you eight, nine, ten. So ten will make up the actual center line for the, for the stitch work. Now I did put a stitch marker for myself when I started it so that I could understand when I was, once I did the first one I did the join I wanted to make sure I knew where the point was so I knew where to join the second one in and then I kept joining and then I only wanted two in a row and then I put in the other one. So at the other side these will all look open like this and then when you put the square you'll pull those back in and it gives you that opening shape. Hopefully that makes any sense. So the particular sample has a color breakdown. I like things that are kind of almost like the same but that's just me. I use Peyton's Grace today. We are gonna use a four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play. And what I'm strongly recommending to you is which I waited to the end is that weave in your tails as you go. And I'm also an assembly line crocheter. So let me explain that to you. If you are changing the color you can do this like an assembly line. So when I did this I knew how many that I wanted to do for the sample. So I did all of the middles first. Okay so I did all six. I then did all of the next layer for all of them as well and then I went and did the blue then for all of them. So I had those already. Now the next two rounds are the same color. So then when I grabbed those I finished off the one square which will be finished off without joining to anything because there's nothing to join to. And then what we just do is that every time you finish the last two um, ideas is that they're going to be joining. So let's talk about where they're joining and let's zoom in and show you. Now you're going to notice that when we're doing this it actually works out pretty easily. So if there's nothing to join to you just are just going to fill it in and go around the motif. So let's say we're gonna finish this one. If you are joining you are going to substitute some stitch work so that you are joining on a corner so that the corners are joined. You're going to join it the, at these chain three spaces. So you're joining here here, here, here and here. And so they'll be forcing a join as you go. So instead of chaining three you're going to chain one, slip stitch to the um, one that you wanna join to and then chain one and then come back to the square that you were working with. And you'll do that. 
this is not hard my friends. Really it's really quite easy. What I am going to tell you though is that whenever you're joining I would not try to join more than two at a time or two sides at a time. So what I'm going to do the next part is that I will just continually add on and then I'll add on to the next one so you can join here and then to the one that's about to join. So try to only join two sides of anything. What you also have to pay attention to is that there are going to be some squares where the joining is going to use the same join. So for example when I did this is that they are sharing the same point for the join. So when you do this square and this square they're going to be sharing the same joint. So make sure that you're consistent on going into the same spot to how you wanna join it so that it'll look all the same. Okay, so let, enough uh, yibber yabber. Let's uh, get at her and let's begin and this is actually a pretty easy pattern to be able to do and to remember as you're crocheting this thing along. So let's begin and we're going to start off with the small tail. This is an intermediate level and I think it's just based on the way that it's um, the lace work but also how it's being attached to each other which bumps it to an intermediate level. We're going to chain a total of four so one two, three and four and insert the hook into the beginning stitch way over here and pull through to form the center ring of your motif. And now I want you to use this straggler to be wrapped around with that so that it gets stuck underneath and let's officially move on to round number one keeping the same color. To do the round you're going to chain four. So one, two and three that's your first double crochet and the fourth one is a chain one space. So always remember that. Now just pry open the center of the ring and you are going to double crochet and go right up over top of that straggler so it gets stuck up underneath and you're gonna double crochet and then chain one and then double crochet back into the same one. And you're gonna repeat that going all the way around. So with the chaining of three and the double crochets that you see they'll all have a chain one spaced in between. So you should be able to count a total of 12. So this count that chain three. So one, two, three, four and then chain one, do your fifth and do all the way to 12 for me and meet me back here in just a moment. So I should be able to count these chain, this, sorry these double crochets that you have. The chain three counts as one of them. There's a total of 12. Make sure at the end of the last double crochet that goes in you chain one and you attach it to the third chain up of the beginning chain four. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna weave in the ends. This is the only time I'll, I'll show you on this video just for your time constraint. And you're just gonna snip this yarn. Now you've been going up and over top of the one in the middle hopefully. If you haven't been do it for the future ones because then what you can do for those is that because you went up over top you can just snip it. You don't gotta worry about sewing. So with this particular one here you wanna hide in your loose ends. I would do it with a tapestry needle. It's the best way to go and because there's going to be a lot of ends on this particular sample because it's fabulous is that you just wanna work with it. So this is the good side as a, an experienced crochet. I know that. So I'm gonna turn it to the other side so the back side. So just pretend it's like a steering wheel and I just wanna drag it through the top layers. We're gonna go up over top of that with the future stitches. So make sure you don't change the shape and go through once. Just stay in here twice. This just takes a few seconds uh, once you get moving on these things and then go through the third time. I did in my particular sample I waited until the end to do all the loose ends and I severely regretted it in the end. So do it as you go. Quick snip and you're good. So I would do all of your motifs like this. I believe that they're 64. If you are changing color you, you might you have to take that into account as well. So what I want you to do is that I want you to get ready for round number uh, round number two. Let's so begin round number two. I'm gonna give you an alternative start just as based on my own experience. So um, you know sometimes they have to stick within the rules of crochet when they're designing. So I'll give you an alternative. So you want to go to any one of these chain spaces. Now it says to go in there to, into a space and just attach and then you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. This is what it says to do. And now you're going to go and fill in this with the cluster. So this is the beginning of this. So yarning over going into the same space pull through, go right up over top of that straggler catch, capture underneath and you're gonna pull through two and hold and then you'll wrap and do it again. Pull through, pull through two and hold. You're going to then wrap and pull through all three. 
I find this chain three is a little too tall. This is my own experience. So what I would recommend to you, here's an alternative. Again, if when you find your own ways, please exercise that. It's awesome. So just going in to any one and attach and only chain two. And then that'll keep it the same height. And then yarning over and in, pull through two and yarning over, pull through, pull through two. Then pull through all three. Do you see it looks like the same height? Because it is. So in between each one of these spaces you're going to apply this cluster. So in order to jump to the next cluster you have to chain three. So one, two and three and then do the cluster in the next. So just yarn over and going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. And you do that a total of three times. So when we did it before that's considered the beginning cluster. This is a regular cluster. So you'll see four loops, pull through all four and then chain three to move on. So one, two, three. Next space one more time to show you in, pull three. So you're collecting. Pull through all four loops, chain three. So do this all the way around. This is round number two. When you get all the way around don't forget to chain that three and when you slip stitch, slip stitch to where they are joined all together. Okay, where you did the pull through all of them and that's where you wanna end. So you want to fasten this off. If you are changing your color this is where you're gonna fasten off. I'm gonna weave in my ends and I'll be right back in just a moment. Let's begin round number three. I found round number three to be a little bit of a mind boggle but once you get used to this it's, it's actually pretty good. So we're going to be playing within the chain three spaces in between those clusters and I'm gonna show you attaching with the standing single crochet because it looks better. So coming in, just come into the space with it already onto the hook and I want you to yarn over and pull through but don't pull through that original loop and now you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. That's a standing single crochet. So that's your first single crochet going in. In the same space you want to chain three. So one, two, three and then in the space the same one single crochet again. Now to get to the next space this is where your, your mind has to go a little bit. You have to chain five. So remember you chain three or you're chaining five. So one, two, three, four, five. This chaining of five is what we're gonna be playing in in the next round. So into the next space we go we single crochet, chain three and single crochet in the same space. Now to jump to the next one as chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Next space is single. Then chain three and single. Please do this all the way around. This is the next round. This is round number three. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm in my last space. So I'm chaining my three and then to come back to where it started I have to chain five to jump over as you know. So one, two, three, four, five. So just attach it to the first single crochet. Please weave in your ends now and then we'll be right back. So it should almost look like a snowflake at this moment. So do that and I'll see you back here. Just fasten off and I'll be right back. Let's get ready for now four and five. They're using the same color but if you of course if you wanna use uh, round four as a different color that's up to you. You can be playing in these chain five spaces only. Okay, so ignore the chain three. Those are just kind of there and the chain five they're every other one if you look at it from that perspective. So there's one and there's one and etc. So just go into each, any one of them and I want you to start off this and we're going to then chain a total of three. So just attach it and chain three. So one, two and three and double crochet into that same space and just remember that this is a chain five space so you wanna chain five now. So one, two, three, four, five and in the same space two more double crochet. If you go right up over top of those straggler you should be able to cut that out without having to worry about it falling out in the future. That's up to you. So once that one is done you just immediately just jump to the next space. So you're not providing any chains in between. So go to the next chain five space and do two double crochet and then chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and then two more double crochet. 
So what you're going to notice about round number four is that it's not turning square. So it's the very final round when we do all the joining to each other or on its own that it will turn square at that time. So in each of the chain five spaces please two double crochet, chain five, two double crochet and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So when you come up to the end of number four you're just going to join it to the top of the chain three that you started with. If you wanna change the color that's up to you. You are the creator and it's still round and I want you to hold here just momentarily. Let's explain what we're going to do with the next part of this tutorial. It's gonna be in two parts. So we're going to divide into two parts. At this point I'm going to show you how to convert this into a square. Your very first motif has to be done on its own because there's nothing to join to. Then once the first one's done they start then joining to each other as you go and pass the rounds. So right now you're looking at a 12 point idea. So when we go to start we're going to be starting kind of like in the top of the here. So this here will be a corner. So the one before will be a corner. And then these two will be on their own as part of the side and then here's the new corner. So if you can think about this here is a corner, the next two are side, the next one is a corner, the next two are side and then corner, you'll see how it will come together. And if you look at it from that perspective then it's easy to remember. Okay, so we're just gonna just jump right in and I'm gonna show you how to make this into a fully square without joining and then I'm gonna frog out and then show you how to join in the next part. So let's do the first part. So right where we are we need to slip stitch into the next double crochet and also slip stitch into the next two chains. So just moving yourself along. And then that's it. So this space here, this chain five space before is an actual corner. So you're actually starting just after the corner and these two are going to be part of the side and then this will be the corner here. To begin chain one and single crochet into the first one. So the next stitch what we're going to do is that we're gonna chain three. One, two and three and look at these two how they're leaning into each other. The first one here right where my thumb is moving and the last one here right where my thumb is moving is gonna become together. So you're gonna grab this one and this one and do a two together double crochet. So wrap the hook going into the first one, pull through, pull through two and hold and then jump over to the last one. So and wrap and pull through, pull through two and pull through two and hold. So those just became together when you pull through all three loops. To move on you have to chain three from that. So one, two and three. And in the next space that's right coming up is going to be a single crochet. So the sides here are gonna be made up with a single crochet in this space. Then you're gonna do this two together fun stuff as you're passing between them and then there will be a single crochet in the next chain five space. So now we're gonna move on and the next one will become a corner. So you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. The chaining of three is gonna be consistent except for in the corner itself. So that you're gonna put three trebles into this chain five space. So I'll do that. So wrap the hook twice. Don't forget that's a treble. And then in the corners in this particular sample it's chaining of five. So one, two, three, four, five. You'll see how that, why that is later. So in the same one this is part of the corner, three trebles to finish that so that you end up with a 90 degree turn. So once you come out of a corner you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and in the next chain five space that's a single crochet. This is exactly where we started on the last round or on the last side. It was right here. So do you remember what we have to do? We have to chain three and we have to put the first and the last one together with the two together double crochet. So come into the first one and then come into the next one which is the last one and then pull all that together. And to come out of that you need to chain three and single crochet into the next space. And then we're hitting a side again. So we're gonna chain three before we begin a side which means a corner. That's what kind of what I meant. So you're gonna put in three treble to begin that. 
and then how many chains are on the corner itself? Do you remember? It's five. So one, two, three, four, five. And you wanna finish that corner. So you're gonna put in three more trebles to get that 90 degree turn. And then you're going to start the side again. So chain three come to the next space, single crochet and then you're gonna do that two together one. So chain three to start it and then go to the first and the last one for a two together double crochet. And then chain three to move on and single into the next chain five space. And now we're hitting to another corner. So chain three to begin that corner and then three trebles into the next space. Chain five to turn and three trebles again in. When you get long chains like this it's very easy to have it unwrap in the hook as you you do that. So watch if I don't hold it it can unwrap itself. See? So what I like to do is that I like to just pinch and then going into the same. If it's gonna do that. Not, not everything happens like that but it can. And that's when you start off with a long chain before doing a stitch. Okay so the corner is complete. Chain three to move on. You're going to single the next one right out, next space and then chain three and you're gonna put two together and then chain three to move on, single crochet in the next space and then chain three and we're on our last corner chain five to turn and this is where we started. You can see that. So we're gonna just finish this corner. So three trebles to do that and then chain three to move on. So one, two, three and the single crochet is where we started. So you will just slip stitch and this is where you will fasten off and weave in, in your ends. But before I do that I wanna show you the joining points on how it's going to work in the future. So what I wanna show you is when you go to join the next square what I recommend to you is that you never join on the very first side that when you're going to do it. So when you start off you don't wanna join here. You wanna wait until you at least get the first full side ready to go. So let's just say we're gonna do that and I just wanna use my, my pen to show you. So each one of these chain three spaces that we had is going to be a joining space as well as these chain fives. So instead of chaining five you're only gonna chain two and then you're gonna slip stitch to your neighbor and then chain two to do that. And then you'll do exactly what you had here. So you'll have your trebles coming into the square that you're playing with. So this is a chain three space. So each one of the chain three spaces is going to become a joining spot along the way. So instead of chaining three you're chaining one and then you would join and then chain one to complete that. So it'll be attached. And so you'll do all of them like that and then the corner again you'll have your two. You'll do your join and then two to finish and then you'll continue the square that you're working on. So that's how you're going to be able to do that. So I wanna show you the actual sample itself to show you what that's gonna happen. Now if you have to attach to two sides at the same time when you come around the corner as soon as you have your next chain three space you're just gonna continue to join those. So you can see that there's a total of four of those and then you'll have your corners and then that, that's how they're joining. So let me show you the actual sample. So I already showed you this at the beginning but if I pull it apart you can really see it. So you got your corners that are attached. So this one here looks like it went here. 
when I went to, so I chain two, slip stitched and chain two and then carried on to do this one and then when I chained my three on this example then what happened was I joined it at the same time. So joined it in the chain three space here and then I came and did my, my magic and then I did everything. So every time there's a chain three to think about you're joining it to something else when there's a join. So if I was joining it to two things at one time or two I just can follow the corner around and continue to join it and as the weight of this goes you're gonna see it open up beautifully on the model. So let me show you how to do the final round again but this time I'm going to join it to my sample. So the way that the orientation was when we went to go work with this is how I showed you how to lay it out. So let's just quickly look at that one more time. When you go to start this what I would do just grab one so your first motif is the center point and then start growing it out like this and so you're gonna join and then join. So I put a, slit, a stitch marker right here so that I knew exactly where the point was and then there's about four of these motifs that are going across. So you just keep joining, joining, join, join, join and you'll do that with the both sides and then eventually these two here will join at this mark right here and that that will create the opening that you would like. So I would think about joining three only and then maybe try it on. If you want a smaller hole at the top that's how you're gonna do it. So you can actually emit this and that will emit a whole whack of uh, squares that you have to do as well. So if you want more of a tighter neck. So I'm just gonna frog the existing one out so that the round five is the one that's going to join. So we'll just do that really quickly and in this case what we have to pay attention to is that when I go to join there's already two things joining to this. So I'm gonna join to exactly to the same spot so that it looks like it all belongs together. So let's go all the way back to the very beginning and let's start round number five all over again and we're going to start it at the end and we'll slip stitch our way over just to be consistent for where we need to start. So let's begin round number five with the join. So round number five here we go this is the joining. So you are going to slip stitch over and you'll slip stitch the first double crochet and the two chains in a row. And that's where you're gonna begin. So don't ever attach this to a neighbor on this first part because you're only in a partial of side. You're not on a full side so there's no point. So you're gonna chain up one and single crochet in the same one. You're then going to chain three so one, two, three and you'll do that double crochet two together with these two middles like we had showed you before. Pull through all those and then chain three to move on and then single crochet in the next one and then we're gonna head to the corner. So chain three to get to the corner and put in your three trebles as you already knew how to do. So that's the first side of a corner. And where the equation is gonna change instead of chaining five we're only gonna chain two. We're gonna go to your neighbor and then we're going to chain two. So watch. You're gonna chain two and you want to if there's nothing else to join. So if it's just this guy by himself and there's nothing here you're just gonna go around the chain. But if it's one that already has something there go into the exact same spot. So this is the right side facing up. I'm just gonna sneak the hook in behind and I'm just gonna grab it to where the other one is grabbing at the same spot and then I'm just gonna yarn over and pull through and that's a slip stitch. Like that and then chain two so one and two and so that's considered your five on a corner and come back here and put in your three treble again. So instead of it being on its own it's being attached. So every time there's a chain three space it's only gonna be a chain one with a slip stitch to your neighbor and then a chain one to come back. So now we technically would chain three and single crochet here but we're gonna join. So we're gonna just chain one and then come to the next space that's available to you on the opposite one coming from behind and slip stitch and then chain one and then single crochet into the next space. So now that chain three space is joined. You're then going to remember th that we have to do that fun stuff with the two together. So we have to chain three to get there normally but in this case we're gonna chain just one and come into the space. You can see where the other two are together. They're right here. Do you see that? 
So you're gonna come into this space and this space. So we're gonna do this space first. So you're gonna slip stitch and then chain one and then you're ready to do the two together on the front side. And then normally we would just chain three but we're gonna chain only one and then come into the space on the other side of that. Okay, so we were, here's the space before it. Here's the two together on this one. So we come to the space right after it. And then chain one and then we single crochet into the next one in the front. So we're going to then chain one and we're gonna head to the corner next. So we're only chaining one because we're gonna come to the space before the corner on the opposite one. Slip stitch, chain one and then we're going to start immediately with the three trebles on the corner. Once you get that done, you're ready to turn. So we're not finished with joining here because if you look at it, this corner is not yet attached. So you can see all the joining in between. So we have to finish this one here. So we're only gonna chain three, or sorry, we're only gonna chain two. So one and two and come into the corner. So just come right into a space. It'll align itself. Just go right into a space and then chain two and then finish that corner on the one you're working on. So this square is now officially attached. So you can finish the square exactly how you know it to be. If you had to attach it to something else, instead of chaining three to, and jumping over, you'll chain one and you'll attach to the next square if there was one here to be able to join. So just chain up three to jump and single crochet and then chain three. Do your two together. and then chain three to come out of that. Single into the next space and then do your next corner. So I've already shown you how to do all that. So now at this point they are then joined. So in the future when you look at it from this perspective, let me just zoom you out. As this one's been building out, you will build out the other one and then you will have another one that's going down in the front and then you keep on building this as you go. So I would go sequentially because you may not want it as big as the model. So you can actually just reduce the amount of work. So now I wanna show you the lower edge. Obviously yours will be much bigger but I have completed enough of it so I can show you how to do it. So I'm going to turn this upside down. So this is the right side. So if you're wearing it, I want uh, we wanna have the right side facing and I'm going to start off in the one point. Okay, so I'll just move the other point off the table here and I wanna start right here at the bottom edge. Let's zoom in and let's show you what to do. So with the slip knot already on the hook, I want to create a standing single crochet into the point. So if you don't like that, just uh, slip stitch to attach, chain one and then single crochet. But if you uh, go through the actual um, space itself with the already on the hook and pull through, you have two loops pull through the two and that's a standing single crochet. So we have something that it's gonna be maintained all the way around and what we have to watch out for are these treble spots. So right where those trebles are, that's what we need to keep an eye on. So this is one single crochet. So this is part of what is called as a group. You're gonna chain three, so one, two, three and in the same space I need you to put in two double crochet. So one and two. Now because the treble is next, we're normally gonna play within these chain three spaces but because the treble is next and because of the distance of the corner, the next group which I just created is going to go in the middle treble. So you're gonna start off with a single crochet, chain a total of, um, what was it, chain of three and then two double crochet into the same stitch. So that's your group. So it's gonna create these like almost like a scalloped edge. Now you're just gonna move to the chain uh, three space and single crochet, chain three and two double crochet. And you're gonna follow this all the way around. So on the base, the basic point at the very uh, back, that's all you're gonna do right here in the edge. 
Okay, so you want to make sure that you're doing that and following it all the way around. So where this changes is that once you've done this gap here, you're gonna come to the middle one of this treble. Then you're gonna come into this gap. You'll go to the gap and then the middle one of the treble. So when you're passing those trebles, make sure the middle one gets it. So just like this group was done, we single crochet in the next chain three space, chain three, and then two double crochet and do that all the way across. I will meet you at the la at the back of the last point just to make sure because I have to get there anyway. So I might as well meet you there and just verify that you think you know what you're doing. <laughs> I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming close to the corner and this is the, the back side. Well luckily for me it's not a very big uh, sample. Uh, but yours obviously will take time to get there. So you're just gonna go right into the back corner itself and you'll do your single crochet, you'll do your chain three and your two double crochets before moving on. Okay, and that's all you have to do. Then you're just going to go to the middle one which is the treble because it is next and begin what you already know. So then fill that in and I'll see you back to where we started and then this will conclude off then the outside edging and then we'll move on to the necking, the neck edge <laughs> after that and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So I've now just come all the way around and I'm in my last middle treble that you see there. And I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. I'm gonna fasten this off. I've already shown you how to fasten off and then we'll move on to the neckline. I just gotta study it just for a few minutes and then I'll be right back in just a second from now. Okay, so the bottom edging is now done. Actually really looks quite elegant and now we're gonna focus on the neck area. Your neck will obviously be bigger than this but it is adjustable for any of the sizes that you're going to do. And let's move on to round number one in just a second. So let's begin the neck edging. Now for right handers we're gonna be starting on the left hand side. So right here and if this is the left handed tutorial this will appear that I'm right handed. So then start on the right hand then if you're left. So what's gonna happen today is that we're going to then begin the neck edging at where they're joined. Okay, so right in the joining point. And this is gonna and go right into the actual um, join itself. Don't go into a, a space that's holding those together. So just go right in. So don't go into this space. Go right into the actual join. Chain up one and single crochet in the same one. So this time we're going to ignore this spacing here and we're gonna go to the middle treble. So in order to get there you have to chain three. So one, two, three and then single crochet in the middle treble. And then from here you're going to play within those spaces. So one, two, three and four. You wanna play within those. So we're gonna chain three to jump. So one, two, three and then go to the next space single and then one, two, three next space single. One, two, three next space single. One, two, three next space single. And so you're going to jump to the middle one of the grouping of three. And then chain three. So one, two, three and then go to the join. So in this case it is the bottom of the V stitch here. It's the bottom of the point but you will have obviously more. So at the bottom of the point just do it as if it's um, joining just like a side by side. So just go right into the bottom and then one, two, three and just kind of turn your project. So you're gonna go to the middle one of the next treble and then one, two, three and then carry on like that. So you're just watching for those trebles essentially and then you're just chaining three jumping over into the chain three spaces all along. So I want you to do this all the way around. So one, two, two, three. So I have a treble coming. So it's the middle one. One, two, three. I'm jumping to the join. And then one, two, three, jumping to the middle one of the treble. So do this all the way around. This is round number one and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around and I need you to pay attention to how this is finished off. So we're coming to the middle of the treble and this is where we started. To get there you need to double crochet. Okay, so don't chain three to get there. And the reason why we're doing that is that, or say that was a, so we're coming all the way around. Here is the last treble before the join. So I'm in here so it's a single in the last treble. To finish this round in, in the next rounds of two, three and four you, you have to double crochet. So just wrap the hook once 
and double crochet. And what this is doing is it's putting the ending into a middle of a spaces which is where you need to be. So whenever you're finished that's what you have to do. Okay, so don't chain three and slip stitch. You don't wanna do that for these particular cases. So at the next rounds now, now two, three, and four. Let's cover that. So as we start the next round what we have to do is we have to pay attention to the two of the spaces that are on each side of the base. Okay, so you're gonna do this on, so this is the front. So you wanna pay attention to these two right here. So this is over the shoulders and you'll have the same on the back. When you get to these ones here you're going to slip stitch and slip and slip and that'll pull it together. So therefore that'll be missing in the future. And then in the next round you'll do the same and the same and you're gonna notice it's gonna close off. So let's begin rows, our rounds number two, three, and four. And let's just turn our work here and let's begin. To start off with we finish with the double crochet so we're just gonna chain up one and do one single crochet into that same uh, bridging space and then chain three. So one, two, three and then go to the next space. So you're filling things in. So you don't have to worry about trebles because that's no longer right directly below. So, okay, so you're just gonna chain threes. So you wanna pay attention to the base of the V shapes that are in the front and the back of your poncho. Okay, so here is the, the, the space. So this is the space before or before and this is after. So I wanna slip stitch into that space and I wanna slip into the next space. And then begin again. So chain three and then start jumping. And what that's doing is it's bringing those together so that it will help close in the top of this. So I want you to do this all the way around. Just do the same thing on the back and I'll meet you back at the beginning in just a moment. So as I come around in number two, uh, this is where I started and this is where I'm ending. So I'm gonna finish this off with a double crochet in the beginning single crochet so that I can bridge over. Okay, so that was round number two. So chaining up th uh, one, single crochet into the first one and then chain three and then carry on. So you want to at the base of the V you want to close in the final two that are there and I'll be there in just a moment. So I'm looking. Okay, so this is the space before the corner and where's the other space that's right there. So I want to slip into that space and slip into the next space and that again closes it in even more and then I carry on. So chain three and then start jumping spaces and do the same thing on the back. So continue to do this all the way around. I'm coming to the end of round number three. So one more round I'm just double crocheting the final and then we start one more round. So just chain up one, one single in that space and then chain th uh, three and then jumping. And again we want to be conscientious of the last ones that are in the V shape at the front and the back. Now obviously my neckline is, is smaller than what yours will be. So for me it's getting quicker and quicker because you're eliminating out stitches plus it's just chains and single crochets as well. So I'm getting closer to there. I can feel it. So there it is. So there's the space before and after. So I want to chain three, slip into the space before, slip into the space after and then chain three and then start jumping again. So do the same on the back side and I'll see you at the end of this which will conclude today's poncho. So I'm just coming all the way to the end of this and I'm coming into the last space before where it's joined and just double crochet the final to have that come over. So that's it. That's the end of the line my friends and so you're just going to fasten that off and weave it in like and do your magic and I will fasten that off and I'll be right back in a second just to lay this out and take up one final look. Okay, so let's take a look. I just fastened in my ends and let's just adjust this. I have a lot of yarn on my table today and so that's what it looks like at the end. So you can see it really does a nice job of 
not only coming down but also forming into the V shape that you see here. So reduce the sizing of the, the neckline. Probably about an inch per side just to give you perspective on that. Uh, we have now the nice edging that has been done and overall this is pretty awesome. So this is the granny poncho. I hope that this uh, 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 smaller version was a able to help you to do the larger version and overall I'm pretty happy with this and we hope you have a great day and of course we'll see you again another time. Bye-bye now.